Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the video. Today we are very fortunate to have David Anthony give us his three top tips for songwriting and production in K and J-pop. David has written and produced songs for Twice, Oh My Girl, EXO, EXOCBX, Luna and many more. Hi, I am David Anthony and here are my top three writing and production tips for you. Tip one is going to be the most important tools you need to make a great track. There's very minimal tools you need these days to create a great sounding track. The two biggest tools that myself and most producers I know are using, well, there's three actually. A lot of producers are using Massive and a lot of producers are using Serum. In my opinion, my experience, the best two tools you need to have in this game right now is Serum and Splice. Okay, Serum, is a great, great, great plugin. Serum is all about the preset packs that you can buy. The, the thing is, there's so many, you've got to fish out the good ones, yeah? But you've got to go through them all and you've got to get your ear accustomed to listening to what the good ones are. There are some absolute banger preset packs for Serum. I've literally got, I would say in my Serum, probably about 30, 20, between 20 and 30 preset packs. Future Bass, Dubstep, Trap, pads, like literally everything. But the quality of those preset packs, I've managed to fish out and spend hours and hours on the internet finding the ones that are really high quality sounds. Because you've got to get those ones to give that depth in your mix, to give that warmth, to give that feeling of um, edginess, the, the cutting edge sound, the, the cool sounds, you know. Two of my favorite preset packs are from a company called Spinning, which is actually Spinning Records. They have started releasing on Splice some amazing preset packs um, and also Oversampled, which is a private company, uh, just one guy who makes them himself. I'm pulling leads, basses, chord pads from those. Those are among two of my favorites. Yeah, so Splice, obviously everyone knows Splice right now. Splice literally is, is the a tool I think saved a lot of people because you can literally go on Splice and you can find any drum sound your heart desires, <laughs> literally. There's everything on there. And if you, if you can get the, the plan that is a thousand credits a month, I think it's about 25 pound or something, I'm not even sure, can't remember. Then you literally need to scour through Splice, sit there for a long time, just downloading kick snares, kick snares, hats and grooves even. Splice really is a lifesaver because there literally is every kick and snare you ever want on there. And as long as you know how to use them and put them in the right track, there will be every, but you have to spend time going through and listening to the sounds. You can't just pick two or three, pick them on your desktop and be like, oh, I've got three, so that's all right. No, no, no. There's actually some kicks and snares that are from producers who have actually had hits like in the, in the mainstream hip hop charts in the US. They're putting their own sounds on there. So you have got the best of the best sounds of chart music. Tip two is regarding some production ideas. Obviously these tips are probably, I would say aimed at beginners to up and comers. Obviously people who know their game are gonna be sitting listening just thinking, oh Christ, we already know this Dave, come on, tell us something new. So tip two, production. Keep it fresh, keep it simple, find a great bass and kick. Yeah, find a great snapping snare. Find a melody, a musical melody of some kind. There has to be a vibe. You know, you, you, there's got to be a vibe of something. Something in the song that makes you think, oh, you know, something like that. A lot of this comes down to the presets you use as well. Because the thing is, you can play a chord with a piano. And these days, it'll probably sound pretty boring. But if you go into your splice, sorry, into your serum presets, exchange that for a piano that is from spinning records or from oversampled or from cymatics or something, you're probably gonna be like, oh, this is a piano, but this sounds like a cool piano. It sounds like an up-to-date piano. And then that's when you're gonna start grabbing people's attention, which all comes down to fish for sounds, fish for sounds. You've gotta keep fishing for sounds all the time. You'll eventually start having layers in your track that don't just sound like a 1990s ballad. They'll start to sound like a 2020 edgy track of some kind you know so keep that sim keep that going keep the structure simple very short intro 
a lot of beginners get this wrong. They make these huge intros. Sometimes a song can have an intro of two bars. That's all you need. People want to get to the vocals or the hook. People don't want to be longed out with all these long intros that go on forever. Do a short intro, get straight to the vocal, get the track moving. So when it comes in, like, oh, yeah, here we go. Get your verse, nice short pre-chorus, bam, straight to the chorus, you know, with your production. And then and obviously build it up, build it up, verse, pre chorus back down again like a roller coaster ride which i talked about in another video of that that whole theme of the roller coaster ride um which is very important second verse you know a lot of people these days you switch the second verse just like you switch the melodies in the song switch up the second verse bring in a completely new sound take it somewhere else so you're going here then suddenly it diverts you're on your way to brighton and you do a quick diversion to i don't know to, to, to norfolk <laughs> And then once you've been to Norfolk, you come back around again to Brighton. But that little trip to Norfolk would surprise people because they weren't expecting it. You know, that's my kind of analogy. But you get what I'm saying. Make little surprises for people. And try and experiment as well. Because everyone knows sometimes it gets to a point in K-pop tracks where everyone knows what's coming. Everyone knows you've got the poof, just, poof, just then you've got the poof, just, everyone knows that's coming. So it's getting a bit boring. So try and maybe instead of you do a do you know what I mean? Something that throws it a little bit just because Itzy or Twice did doesn't mean you have to do that. You know, do something else, but use the theory of they've done something different in that section. Tip two of production. I won't go on too much longer, but that's a few little things. Tip number three. This is my tip on a formula for getting a chorus sounding catchy and right. This is my little tip on writing a chorus. There is a formula, okay, a particular formula that has worked for many, many years up until now of writing choruses that always works. A lot of people either sometimes forget this when they knew it or they don't know it. But once you know this formula, it really, really helps on structuring choruses. Now, there's no rule on what melody to write or what lyric to write, but there is a really good formula that always works in choruses. And I can give you loads of examples in a minute as well on why this is a fact and not just me making this up. So you've got the formula that I find the most simple way to grab an A&R's attention. The way to get a song cut, okay, is to have a catchy chorus that gets straight to the point, doesn't mess around, gets to the hook as soon as possible, because an a and r doesn't want to be, they don't want to be um, serenaded with lots and lots of melodies, lots and lots of words, lots of melody. They want to be serenaded with some melody and then a hook that, that they can sing along to by the second or third time they've listened to it. Even the first time is even better. So that formula is what I call the ABAB formula. Now, what this is, it's very simple. You've got the A part of the chorus, then you've got the B, then you go back to the A, back to the B, finish. The A part of the chorus, I like to describe it like the starter of the chorus. Yeah, we're talking about solely about choruses. It's like you're telling a little bit of a story. Then the B part of the chorus is the title, the point, what you're trying to say. Then once you've said that, you go back to a little bit more story. Then you go back to the point, the title again. Now, what this does is it allows the listener to get bought into the story. Then just before they get bored, you shout the title at them. Then back again. Then you shout the title at them again. And then they find themselves in, poof, in, been really engaged in the song. A great example is um, last year, Itzy from JYP, their song, Dalla Dalla. It was the perfect example of a, they're a rookie band, right? And they released this song as their first single and it smashed the charts. It did so well. And it's a classic example of an ABAB chorus. You've got the, the beginning part. Killer. That is ABAB. Another classic example. One of my friends wrote this song, my mate Nermin, my Conrad's. <laughs> he wrote Love Me Right from EXO. It's the same. Love me right. Love me right. Then back to A. Love me right. 
it's again classic a b a b chorus the chorus is compact into eight bars the first section is the story then you got the title then you got the story then you got the title most of my own cuts even some of my biggest cuts have been a b a b choruses one of my songs actually one of the first k-pop songs i ever wrote and produced was called liar liar from oh my girl it's the same um liar 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 Liar, 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 back to A. Ding, 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 liar, liar. It's the A, B, A, B again, and it works. I am not saying if you don't use this formula, you won't be successful, but if you are looking for a way to really up your chance of getting a chorus that gets to the point, A, B, A, B choruses always work. Always work. Obviously, the melody needs to be interesting as well. There's no point going, do, 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 do. It's got to have an interesting melody in the A and then a killer title in the B. Then back to the melody, back to the title. But this A, B, A, B chorus has been proven to work time and time again for many, many years. And that, for me, whenever I'm writing a chorus or looking for a chorus from somebody, I always am hoping there's an A, B, A, B chorus because those choruses, they're no brainer choruses. They just work. And then what happens is the listener, sometimes they don't remember the dun, 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 dun. they're waiting for it. Then they're waiting for the title. Liar, 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 liar. And then they, they, they don't know what's being said, but they know this is coming. Liar, liar, liar. And that is what's so great about it. If you've got a chorus that goes that's complicated. That's way too complicated. No one's going to remember that. By the time they get to the third, they're going to be like, Okay, you know, even the changing words in a chorus can be complicated sometimes. If I went, liar, 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 I've caught you, caught you, caught you. Even that's too complicated because by the time they've sung liar, 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 they've got to then think of something else to sing. But if they know liar, liar is coming again, you're sorted. You've got the listener engaged and people want to be able to sing along to songs especially K-pop, J-pop, because they're going to the performances. They want to sing along to the song. They don't want to be sit there in silence thinking, oh God, I can't remember the words. How does it go? You know, another one of my songs, XOCBX, I did a song for XOCBX called Cherish. It has another A, B, A, B chorus. I just, all I can say is use that tip in your songwriting and you will really find your chorus is coming together and engaging with the listener and the a and and publishers. And it's a real good professional, simple tip that will give you a better opportunity at getting a cut. So those are my three tips. I hope you can take something from them and I will speak to you all again soon. Thanks.